so you want to listen to a pretty all right podcast about wrestling, do ya? Well, the natural lad, Jeff Swag, has said time and time again that there's only one podcast that's the most decent and the most all right in the industry today. And that's... It's the Game Radio Wrestling Podcast. Welcome everyone to a brand new wonderful episode of Game Rage Wrestling. My name is Josh. Here today with good buddy Adam. Welcome to the Welcome to the Game Rage Wrestling podcast, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and uh, yes, we are going to be talking about the season, well, I mean, I don't I'm assuming that I don't know if this is a season series finale, finale series. I don't know if it's over, if they're going to do more or what, but this is it. This is episode six of the Mr. McMahon series. This fucking series, I, I hate it so I, good. It's so it stupid. was sold. It was sold as this piece. revolutionary. It, it was going to be a damning piece of, of evidence of, against Vince McMahon and his sexual. And it did X-based. nothing. It did nothing. None of that. It, it was. It just all it did was ex, expound upon what was already told. Yeah, just rehashed all the same shit, and that's basically it. we learned essentially nothing new. So, except for maybe that Vince McMahon's uh, father fucking molested him, probably, or some shit. I don't know. Or beat his ass. Or beat his ass, at least. I mean, that's, Stepfather. Yeah, stepfather. Stepfather. And his, his real dad was negligent towards yeah, him. Yeah, just completely negligent. <laughs> but uh, anyways, before we get into it, if you want to follow our shit, go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube, where you can like, comment, and please fucking subscribe, because we need to hit, we need 19 more subscribers to hit the goddamn number to be able to do live broadcasts, Okay. That's really going to take our shit to the next level. To the next so, level. If you could just please fucking do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you could stop me from having to go buy uh, North Korean fucking bots to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, <laughs> I'd appreciate that. I'd you like know, to do this for real, not paying for we, it. We don't actually do that. No, we don't. But I'm just, I'm just saying I, I would, I'm not going to do that, but I just, it's funny. Uh, also, if you want to follow us on Instagram and TikTok, it's at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag. I am considering just deleting social media altogether because fuck this, it seems like it's doing nothing for us. Yeah, I, I haven't um, touched it in a week. I, yeah, this, I don't even, uh, well, whatever. You can go there if you want, it still exists. Uh, also, I'm considering deleting the website too just because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't plugged it in like a month. And I, I didn't even look at the analytics of it yet, but I think like the month before, it was like three people went there. <laughs> Fucking, so uh, I'm curious to see what, since I haven't plugged it, what it's at this month. I'm not to look right now, but or anyways. The entire population of Antarctica checked out our website. Checked out our website, yeah. Uh, but if you want, you can follow uh, Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. And you can follow Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast on Instagram. Yeet. All right. <clears throat> Yeet. Yeet as a motherfucker. So... So this whole thing is about Jey Uso and him main eventing <laughs> and winning the IC. Nah, I wish. Um, <sighs> so let's get, let's get to the main beats of uh, episode six, which is the beginning of the ruthless aggression era. Uh, Chris Benoit unloading, you know, taking out his rage with his damaged brain. Yes. Unloaded. Uh, he he uh, he took the burden of life off of himself and his family. Unsubscribed. Unsubscribed from the YouTube channel of life, uh, and and took himself out and his kid and his, fa- and, his and wife. And so, okay, a little like because obviously, like I said, this thing said nothing new, but a conspiracy theory, okay, okay that okay. exists about Chris Benoit? about this Chris Benoit thing, Crispin, Chris Benoit. So <laughs> allegedly, and I have seen some screenshots and alleged proof of this, but supposedly. Like several hours before it was reported in the news, Chris Benoit's Wikipedia page was and and his wife Nancy Benoit's Wikipedia page Dead. were updated with deceased and the date of the death. Six hours, hours before, before it was like six or seven hours before it was reported. So okay, I don't believe that because as it is, Wikipedia, you can do that in the browser. Uh, can you change the, the time of when you did it? It's not necessarily about when, when, like, oh, well, unless you as a wiki user are editing the thing, but the the thing I was going to say was I can edit it. Yeah. Because I know I can look at the, if I open up the console for the browser, I can edit the element 
of where it says date of birth and like end date or like the the day oh, that he died. Okay. I could do that manually. Yeah. But you could do that as a wiki user, so it's like it's that one's I don't I don't know if I believe. But that. it was before it got reported. So either someone had an inside information and went on there and did it. Which really, Occam's Razor, you look at the lowest common denominator or the most likely scenario, would be that someone who was within the WWE went in and did that themselves once they got the news that he was dead and went ahead and did it. Or, you know, someone within the system that would have known about it or within like the, maybe it was someone within that sheriff's department that fucking works there that responded to the call of them, the welfare check or whatever it was. Could have been that. All right, if there's any teeth to what you're saying, the only thing that you could really take, you can take as a grain of minutia or a a minutia of a grain Uh or vice versa, I mean, dude, I'm sure there's recordings of, because this pay-per-view happened where Owen Hart died, right? Right, yeah. They have to have that locked away in a fucking vault or whatever, or yeah, maybe yeah, they yeah. just deleted that, those videos. No, I'm sure it's somewhere in videos. a like, I'm sure it exists still somewhere. I think Vince probably jerks off to it, like, that's probably... I, I think there's numerous things that the WWE has covered up, and not to say that... I think Owen Hart or Owen Hart. I think Chris Benoit legitimately did it, but if 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 we're gonna like even entertain the idea that this was an inside job that he got killed or whatever the fuck it is, uh, what are they alluding to that because this happened six hours before his actual before so the, the actual event? Okay, it so happened. the conspiracy theory from the internet, dickheads, and I'm not saying I subscribe to this theory. I'm just saying what the theory is on the internet. Yeah. Um, I thought that was interesting. To me, that would indicate that there's a leak in the chain of somewhere of the information going out. It's not necessarily that, oh, the guy who did it went and updated it. Because the, the theory has always been that this was Kevin Sullivan's ultimate revenge. Kevin Sullivan, okay. Because she was with Kevin Sullivan before mm. and then left Kevin Sullivan to get with Benoit. And so, like, this was people saying, oh, this was his fucking revenge or whatever. His ultimate plan that took... 20 fucking five years or whatever it was since it happened and he just plotted out and waited and then eventually went and went and fucking and killed them or did some shit or whatever right like I I don't really I don't believe that Mm -hmm. but that's the conspiracy theory and then the because it was updated earlier before it happened oh that was everybody says that and I'm like you could they could look and see who the fuck did it like everything has a digital fucking mark on it and this was in what 2004 or 5 so this was like, I mean, this was really before like VPNs were prevalent or existed probably even. So like, I think it's probably closer to two thousand six and seven. Two thousand six and seven, maybe I don't know, but anyways, oh yeah, yeah you're right. I think it was two thousand seven. Um, so basically, we get this whole thing about CTE, right? That's what that's what comes out of this whole this whole deal, because. Uh, in an even funnier, almost WWE-esque twist of, of storyline, an actual guy who's a, who was a wrestler, Christopher Nowitzki, right? He is an actual neuroscientist. Like, that's, he was, because he, he, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, his, but his gimmick, gimmick yeah. was like, he was from Harvard or whatever, and he was like fucking the smart guy. Yeah. I mean, he actually was. And so, uh, he fucking examined the brain or whatever. Because it was donated. One, yeah, because it was donated. And so he determined, he was the one that determined that, oh, he had for sure CTE. And then Vince McMahon said, that's horseshit. Yeah. But maybe you're onto something. Yeah, yeah. And then he donated fucking money for him to right. fulfill his research. Right. And so basically that's what initiated banning chair shots to the head or major things to the head, right? Um. And it worked out kind of for WWE's favor because at the time they were trying to get more sponsors and get bigger. So they just said, okay, cool. With this banning of chair shots to the dome, we're just going to tone down the level of violence altogether. And what's kind of crazy, if you kind of think about it, is that shit is what made wrestling kind of great. It was one of the one of the it wasn't the whole picture. Right. But it was one of the pieces of the puzzle was the violence, right? Like, that's it's one of the things that made it great. And that's why, like, when they went to this PG era and toned it down... So we went back to... 80s, like, the late 80s. One-dimensional characters. One-dimensional character. characters, yeah. Bullshit. 
and it was to get really it was to get more spot that's it was to just get more money because if you can attract more fucking people to to pay then why not um so we we get that whole thing we get shane or not shane uh, stephanie and triple h starting to be involved in the back end a lot more uh with the production side of things through this period uh, yeah, Triple H is still kind of actively wrestling throughout this time, but he's he's slowly taking it, you know, take toning it down. Um, and then now, obviously, since he had his fucking heart attack or whatever the fuck thing that he had where he's got, like, that fucking pacemaker or some shit in his heart now, uh, which they've never officially confirmed or said what his issue, what, what actually happened. Steroids. But it was, again, it's, there's, uh, there's this thing that, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger had it. It's all the guys that do Roids. steroids, and it's not all of them, because Hogan hasn't had any heart issues, uh, as far as I'm aware. That's the biggest irony, is that Ric Flair and Hogan, especially Ric Flair being uh, a substance abuser, is still alive, dude, yeah. over Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, fucking Razor Ramon, dude. Everybody, it's fucking man. incredible, dude. It is incredible how that's possible, and... You get these guys that have, it's like, I, I believe, I forget what the name of the medical term is, but it's this thing where because of the steroids, because you know your heart's a muscle, right? So like, obviously steroids increase your muscle size, so you, you get like an enlarged heart, and it does something to your like aortic valve, mm. where it it makes it larger, but it doesn't, your aortic valve becomes enlarged, but the piece that connects out, like that's the out part of the valve, doesn't grow with it because it's not part of the muscle. It's just like a vein. So you're just getting like a so, surge of blood. Like so, so then what ends up happening over time is as it expands and this thing kind of expands with it, but then eventually there's like a breaking point where I can't do it anymore. You start to get this like leak. And oh, so I got you. Yeah, so that's it's like a tear. Where, kind of, yeah. And so like that's where it, and then it begins to affect like the timing of your heart. It's like all, it's a lot of fucking shit. And so then that's why they put in the uh, pacemaker. And that keeps everything going, you know, steadily or whatever. Okay. So, uh, anyways. So, uh, we have that going on. Shane comes back uh, to kind of work with the WWE. That was in, like, 2016, I think, or 17. Um, which kind of just whatever. Uh, we get the WWE Network as part of this whole deal. Which was, to me, one of the greatest outcomes of the PG fucking era was be simply because of the fact that the only reason I think they made it is because people were clamoring for this shit and they knew they weren't going to give it to them on television anymore. So with them buying up all of these, you know, old tape libraries of all the old promotions that used to exist, because that's what they started doing. Two, three years before they started, they, they were going to do the network, they started buying up and making these offers to people who owned like the AWA, the all these other ones that they have on the well, that were on the WWE network, they started making offers to those people. Like, hey, you got this tape library you're doing nothing with? Eh, how about you give you? We give you two million dollars, and you just fucking give it to us. And they go, okay. And then they do it. And then now all that shit is on what became the WWE network. Yeah. It also, I feel like they they came at the tail end. Well, not not the the tail end, but there were a lot of first people or first first organizations that were dabbling with streaming services and I think they just wised up to them. They're like, let's fucking see what happens, what we could do with wrestling. And and yeah, like it wasn't just solely the taped shit. It was Edge and Christian had their own program. Yeah. Uh, it was talk shows. It was like Stone Cold's podcast. Right. Uh, numerous things. So it was like original cool. content and we haven't seen that since because uh, now that they've been sold to Peacock and, and you know, I don't know how long that deal's gonna last, but uh, it's all it's all fragmented now, and it kind of sucks because the UI for the WWE network was actually pretty fucking good. It's like, damn, you actually had something good. You guys had it in house, but you're like, fuck it, we'll just have it outsourced to somebody else, especially like Netflix or Peacock now. And now it's like it's not serviceable to what the WWE network had where it was easy to search things. It was easy, easy to find things. Yeah. Whereas these other things, it's like, I think maybe Netflix might be more feasible to like raw and shit, but fucking Peacock has the goddamn, the pay-per-views. So it's like, fuck, but we had it all in one spot. Right. Well, 
on the network, that was the only downfall of the network was you you had to wait like I think six weeks per their contract DV, their TV deals, six weeks until the latest shit came out. So you still had to get it to watch the current stuff. But that was again another huge thing that we got was for fucking nine ninety nine a month, you got every single live pay per view for the year, every single pay per view, man. WrestleMania included, and what, what like we when I first initially subscribed to the network, I was a, a I don't know what they call it, but like a, a, a plank owner of it is is the term of like I was one of the first people to download. I was in that first group as soon as it came up, I fucking subscribed, and I had been a subscriber basically since day one. And the reason for that was number one because of I wanted to watch all the old shit because everything I had that was all old shit was just compilations and stuff of of individual matches on DVDs and Blu-rays. And this was gonna give me every fucking thing that had ever been done. And it didn't happen overnight, but I initially subscribed for having it with the little shit that they had from the Attitude Era, and also because of the pay-per-views, because WrestleMania at the time was was 60 bucks. And so for 9.99, I'm paying 120 bucks for the year, half of that, is, it covers my subscription covers WrestleMania half of it, and then the rest of the pay per views are all forty nine ninety nine or whatever thirty nine or well, I think they were forty nine ninety nine. So fifty bucks. I mean, shit. I'm also I'm basically paying for WrestleMania and one pay per view, and I get all fucking twelve of them. Yep. And that was worth it. That was worth the nine ninety nine alone. And uh, once they started getting all the WCW stuff on there, they start. That was when it really was like, oh man, this is fucking excellent. And again, they still have it all on there on Peacock. They just transfer everything over. But the WWE Network was fucking awesome. Uh, they signed this multi-billion dollar multi-billion dollar deal with, deal with Peacock. I think Vince had seen the writing on the wall and knew that some shit was probably couldn't keep this shit under wraps forever. It is one dimensional. It's like you're you're putting all your eggs in a basket for an online service that is strictly about wrestling. It, it's not gonna last. I don't say it's not gonna last, but it's too heavily in on one thing. Well, no, I think what he did was is they just sold it when it was at its peak. I think they were like, because I don't think they ever had a drop in fucking subscribers. I think that it was, hey, uh, we're going to sell the rights to do this so we don't have to do it anymore to someone else. And so now that's what they did. They got like $4 billion or whatever the fucking number was to do this shit. And, uh, you know, we have it on Peacock now. We're getting into the Netflix. Uh, I'm sure Netflix will eventually have everything, but whatever. Sure, we're going to get another uh, shitty documentary about the transition from Peacock yeah, to... Yeah, or, uh, from, from, to uh, tel- cable television to... To, to but, Netflix, yeah. yeah. I'm sure they'll have some stupid, shitty documentary. Uh, but then we get into the... Uh, Vince stepping down in, in 2022 because of allegations of this... Right? Did they talk about the divas like revolution and shit? Did it was a t- little bit in there, yeah. Because they were talking about like Sa- were they talking Sable, about Sable? Yeah, because Sable. Oh, that was the other thing. Like Sable won, like she sued them for the sexual harassment stuff and won a bunch of money, and then came and back. then came back to work for them, and then continued for them to do the same exact sexual harassment type storylines, which was pretty fucking hilarious. Yeah, that I was mean, pretty she funny. made out. Like, I mean, that's kind of the way it works, I guess. Um, so. We had that, the Divas Revolution. You had Trish Stratus talking about stuff, um, saying, yeah, I was getting sexually harassed, but, like, that's just kind of how it was, like, you know. And- I feel like sh- she didn't contribute as much as I would like to. Uh, I don't know if I'm looking for juicy bits, but just to say, like, I, I don't know, because it-, it-, it made it seem like she, not to say she enjoyed it, but it's like, well, for all the shit that I went through, at least I came out ahead, like, I had a career, and I made money and shit. But I also did these things. So she doesn't really like have shame about it. It's like just something that happened. I was actually expecting her more to say, fuck, man, like this work environment was kind of shitty. Like I did all this stuff and I was only uh, like a sex object to Vince McMahon for a majority of time. And yeah, then I eventually got my titles and uh, the women's title and shit. But we didn't really get anything from her. I at least personally. No, I didn't yeah, think so. we really didn't. Um which again, I, at the time of the recordings of most of these, I don't think that they felt. They, I don't think that that was the intent of this. Well, like John, I, I think it was in this one, or it was the previous one, where John Cena was asked, "How will uh, Vince McMahon be be remembered?" And I'm, I'm sure uh, maybe it's episode six because they start getting to the retrospective idea of Vince McMahon, or 
having some perspective and John Cena refused, like he basically gives a political answer. He's like, well, I don't know. I'll leave that to other people to, I'm like, oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course Vince McMahon or rather John Cena would give a diplomatic answer like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, then we basically just get the, the whole deal with Janelle Grant, Janelle Grant. Uh, I mean, he, he steps down in 2022, comes back just six months later <laughs> as the <a> CEO. <laughs> And then, uh, and then as we're, as they're recording this, they get the news, and then the interviews end up being canceled from here on out, and they didn't really get to finish, yeah, whatever they set out to do, yeah. And so, basically, this was already post the sale to Endeavor, and Vince then just once these other Janelle Grant allegations come out, he just fucking resigns immediately, and then sells. Half a billion of a stock in in TKO basically, um, and then that's kind of like oh it's the end of it. Uh, everything is still like the Janelle Grant case hasn't been resolved resolved yet, um, which I kind of I kind of feel like this was fucking premature of them. I feel like they should have waited to release this. If you had this horse shit right, you might as well wait to release this when there's a resolution for that. Because they had been sitting on this, because this this shit all was recorded in... Uh, 2021, I think, or 2022? Yeah, that's when they started doing this. So it's like, if you've been sitting on it for that long, and then at the end in 20, 2024, when Vince resigns, that was when your, your last... Those, those allegations came out or whatever, and that was like going to be your last set of interviews. Why not just fucking wait? Just just wait until this thing's resolved. Wait another couple of years, like, you know what I'm saying? And just see when this gets resolved so you can have a definitive, like... Ending, ending or something. It. And now it's just left open-ended, thus further ingraining the shittiness of this whole... Fu- and, and, and uselessness of this whole documentary. Um, this documentary, fucking zero out of ten. This was shit. I, oh, yeah. I, I fucking hated it. Um, Getting through these episodes is just painful because it's it's like everything has been covered by, like, Dark Side of the Ring, WCW fucking documentary, WWE's the numerous documentaries that have already been made. Yeah, that, that they make themselves covered a bunch of this shit. So, like, it, it just rehashed old, old shit. And... It never really got to the bottom of the whole... <laughs> point of the documentary about the lore of uh, Vince McMahon himself, like his own personal life. Yeah. You got tidbits and pieces of that, and but it was mostly to pertaining to the company mm-hmm. itself, like the whole Linda McMahon and uh, Shane McMahon, uh, Linda McMahon being in, like in a catatonic state and Vince McMahon yeah. fucking uh, cheating on his wife and shit. But that was like all kayfabe shit, but we never really got much more than, oh my, I was abused as a kid. And uh, my dad was a dickhead. Yeah. And uh, that was it. Or, and, and like, there were small nuggets about him having an encounter with Shane McMahon uh, about ownership of the company or what they should do with about the UFC. Yeah. And him telling them, like, all right, well, if you want to do that, use your own fucking money or you're going to stab me right now. And he's like, no, nah, I can't do that. And he's like, that's why you're a bitch. That's why you're soft. <laughs> you can't fucking kill your own father. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it doesn't change my perception about Vince McMahon. It's, like, what you would expect anyways so if anything it just it was an eye-opening thing for maybe for casual viewers even even if that because if you're already familiar with kind of wrestling or if you're not really familiar with wrestling this would all be new information to you which i think is what this was probably catered towards yeah it was for people that had no idea about this shit (sighs) Uh, and it, it, to me, it was, it was sold as, oh, we're going to get to the bottom of these sexual harassment allegations. And that was like, not even really any portion of this at all. So, I mean, there was like maybe 10 or 15% of this was that. And it's like, that's not enough. You can't sell it to me on that and then not deliver it. So fuck these guys, fuck Netflix, uh, fuck them all. Whoever made this documentary garbage. Uh, hopefully they don't fuck. Hopefully these assholes aren't involved with the production of net of raw on Netflix. Uh, so they don't fuck that shit up. Fuck. Whatever. I guess we'll see. Yep. Um, anyways. All right. That'll be it. Fucking fuck these guys. Uh, also, stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to go on a fucking rant about WWE being a piece of shit uh, and going too far. So anyways. And never getting invited to WrestleMania. Yeah. Ever, ever again. Uh, fucking for sure. So uh, if you want, you can follow us on Game Rage Magazine. Well, uh, apparently only bots listen to this shit. So maybe we could get it fucking invited. Um, Game Rage Magazine on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. We only need 19 more subscribers. Please just fucking do it, all right? Just fucking do it. Just do it. 
Make a couple fake accounts and do and do like three or four accounts. I don't give a fuck. Just give us the fucking fifty. That's all we need. For two subscribers a month, you can feed Game Rage magazine. Yeah, exactly. In the arms of an angel. angel. <laughs> uh, anyways, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X Game Rage Mag. You can follow Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast, and you can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official. <laughs> all right, that's the end of it. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. That was another wonderful, amazing, powerful episode of the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. And take it from me, ladies and gentlemen, the natural lad, Jet Swag. If there's one podcast, one show you should be listening to, that you should be absolutely grateful for, it's the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. And one of the things you can do to show your appreciation for all the hard work and dedication that these boys put out day in, day out, just for you people. It's that you can go and you can subscribe and you can like and follow them on the Instagram and the TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. You can also follow them and like them and subscribe to them on the old Twitter, which I don't know what it's called now, but who cares? It's at Game Rage Mag there. Additionally, if you feel the need to really show your appreciation, which you should, then go to their website at www.gameragemagazine.com and show us some love. Show them some love. And show some love for the natural lad, Jet Swag. Jet Swag.